Our topic today is pranayam for emotional well-being. Now, there are two aspects to it. One is pranayam and the other is emotional well-being. These ancient teachings of yoga and meditation offer a lot of solutions for us to find within ourselves the peace and calmness that we are looking for. It is human. It's just the hypnotic way of the world that it seeks that we look for it outside. We look for happiness outside. We look for others to make us feel better. But the real key and the real spiritual path is the journey of the soul and its evolution to find its center within oneself. And we are all a part of the divine. And it is our soul that travels with us across lifetimes, as said in these ancient blessed teachings. So when we do asanas or when we practice pranayam or when we do a meditation, all of this is an investment in the journey of the soul, in its evolution and its expansion. When we talk of emotions, what are emotions? Emotions are, in some way, energy given to our feelings. And therefore, there is some motion that happens. We have also started to notice now more than ever that the emotions that we experience has, uh, is as contagious, like a virus, to everybody else around us. If someone at home is upset, then the whole family gets upset. The children take it to school. Everybody takes it to office. It spills in the teams that we work. And then people take that home. So you can actually pass on your emotions to a whole lot more people without even recognizing what we are doing. Now, we can't call emotions positive and negative, it may be better to call them healthy emotions and difficult emotions. The healthier emotions are good to be contagious. So you meet someone cheerful and happy and they spark a little bit of joy in you and you feel good. And that's a positive contagion. So feelings of happiness, calmness, joy, love, compassion, and to, this year we have the theme of yoga for humanity. So feeling that oneness and connection and compassion is very positive, virtuous cycle to be on when we are looking at emotions. Now, on the other side is the vicious cycle of the more difficult emotions like anger, fear, shame, guilt, disgust. All of these are difficult emotions to go through. Grief, for instance. And we can't wish them away. We have to do something about them. And that is where the teachings of yoga come in very handy. They help us transmute these emotions from that difficulty into more processable, healthier, higher functioning states of the mind. One of the fundamental teachings here when you're, um, and, and not just the ancient teachings, but there's a lot of modern research for all of us who are very scientifically and rationally minded as to what is the proof. More and more research is showing that if one is able to move one's attention from the back part of the brain, which is the more ancient part of our brain coming from our hunter-gatherer times, which looks at everything from a fight, fear, please kind of mode. Because the hunter-gatherer times, we only looked at that tooth saber tiger and said, will it eat me or can I you know, save myself? And if it was a less dangerous animal, can I hunt it and take a meal back to my tribe? So that brain had only that fight light or freeze mode. Now, the modern brain, we are all knowledge workers. We are all working now with our computers and our brain is really our tool that we use. Like a carpenter uses a saw or a hammer, we use our brain. 
And this particular part of the brain, prefrontal cortex, uh, is very, very important. It is called the executive center of the brain. This is where decision making happens. This is where ideas come to you. This is where you are able to innovate and conceptualize and think clearly between options and move forward. So the crux of all spiritual practices, of asana practice, of pranayam practice, is to bring our energy from the back of the brain to the front of the brain. And when we are able to do that, we are more resourceful. We let go of those limiting beliefs and that inner critic inside us, which is telling, stealing our confidence and energy. So that's part on emotional well-being. And all of the teachings of meditation particularly is very powerful to bring energy into this part of the brain. And even when you experience a moment of st if you just remembered in that moment, take a few breaths, you would be far more resourceful. So that's on the emotional well-being aspect. Of course, the emotional well-being is also related to our physical well-being and our spiritual well-being. So it is physical, mental, spiritual, emotional well-being. All of that has to come together for us to feel well. And therefore, it is very important to take care of all the petals of well-being, not just the physical, not just the emotional, but also the spiritual. In Ananda Yoga, our founder, Swami Kriyananda, emphasized mini meditations and taking our attention to this point, the spiritual eye, the Agya Chakra, the uh, uh, Christ center, as it is called in Western teachings. That's really our doorway to our higher consciousness and our higher potential. And that is where we want to focus while practicing pranayam and while practicing asanas when possible after the learning phase, as well as in your meditation, which is why we keep saying, get, lift your gaze to the point between the eyebrows. So that's a little bit the context of emotional well-being and the connection with pranayama. So this class is presented along with my co-teacher today, Amrita Dubal, who will be also demonstrating and also sharing on uh, mudras, which are a very important part of pranayama. But first things first, what is breath? In my biology classes, we learn it as intake of oxygen and exhalation of carbon dioxide. In the context of life, breath is everything that happens between birth and life is everything that happens between the first breath that a baby takes when it, he or she is born. And, you know, there's a lot of curiosity in the labor room as to is the baby crying? Because when the baby cries at birth, that is when the lungs open and it cuts the connection with the mother with whom it was take, dependent on its oxygen supply and starts to breathe independently. The first breath of a baby is an inhale and he or she comes in to greet the world crying <laughs> and uh, feeling a little nervous about this life. The last breath is an exhalation and we say he or she breathed their last. It's a exhalation. And life is everything that happens between that first inhale and the last exhale. We take a lot of care on how we eat and how we exercise, but breath is far more important and we pay scant attention to that. Breath has the capacity to change our mental outlook and therefore adding positive affirmations to your pranayam practice can even enhance the experience and be truly transformational in your life. Pranayama is often loosely translated as breath work or breathing exercises. It is much more than that. It is control of the life force. The goal of all pranayama is to actually achieve that state of breathlessness. So if ever in your practice, you feel you don't need to breathe anymore, don't worry, that's really the goal and savor and enjoy that moment. It is a very soothing experience to have, but it is not to force and hold our breath back. The two components of pranayama are prana and yama. Prana is life force and yama is control of life force. And so therefore it is controlling the energy. 
right? Now, there are broadly, those of you who come from various yoga traditions are aware of it. There are five aspects of prana. Each of them have bodily functions and spiritual functions. I'm not going into the detail of it, but for those who are interested, you could do a quick read. But the five pranas are prana, vyana, apana, samana, and udana. And they also have very specific locations in the body, like we can see in this little diagram. So these are the locations where the different pranas have their centers. And it is important that we get the balance and the flow and the volume right so that there is no blockages in our energy. In pranayama, posture is very important. It is important that you sit on a cushion with your pelvis tip so that you can completely open up your system to breathe deeply. The head should be comfortably over the shoulders, so not pointing forward or too much high up. The chin is parallel to the ground. The shoulders are relaxed away from the ears. Usually in a pranayam class, we do a lot of warm-ups before pranayam so that you can breathe deeply. You should do a few stretches, particularly the knee lunges and it is good to center your awareness by chanting a mantra. And you can keep your gaze uplifted at the point between the eyebrows. Yeah. Now, there are some very basic cautions. And that is that uh, people with cardiovascular diseases, uh, conditions, and um, expecting mothers, pregnant women, should not hold their breath for very long. Because that can put a little stress on the baby who is dependent on you for oxygen. So uh, keep a comfortable breath. Always try and be very relaxed while practicing pranayam. Don't make it like a huffing and puffing exercise. And good to practice in a well-ventilated room where there is fresh air coming in. You have comfortable loose clothes. That is cotton preferably. Helps you breathe and absorb more. And it should be done on an empty stomach. Yeah, some of the practices that we uh, recommend is the energization exercises and the energization exercises I highly recommend. They were taught by Paramahansa Yogananda and comes from over 100 years and has been an extremely rewarding practice for all those who practice it. It has transformed them at many, many levels. So it's good to learn that energization exercises. There is circle of joy, which we will be using, and full yogic breath. So these are good warm-ups to do. And here's a little bit of research. So 60 to 90 percent of the diseases are caused due to stress, says Harvard researchers. And these are some of the manifestations of that stress. So hypertension, um, cardiac conditions, diabetes, asthma, chronic allergies, headaches, backaches, skin issues, cancer, depression are all related to stress. And it could be coming from a fundamental belief of not accepting what is happening in your life and wishing it were different and worrying and fearing more and more about it. So all of these practices help us be more relaxed. Okay. So first of these that we are going to take up today is Nadi Shodhanam. And it is, as you can see, a practice that reduces stress. It is excellent for your immunity. It stimulates the nervous system. It prevents sinus infections. It helps you overcome jet lag if you're crossing time zones. It increases alertness of the mind and also keeps you energized. I would uh, request Amruta to talk to us a little bit about mudras, and then we will go into our practice. That are beautifully mentioned, uh, many benefits of pranayama, and now how to add something extra to it that is with the use of mudras. So, when we say mudras, there are some hand positions you must have seen classical dancers doing uh, these positions like this, this, many various positions they are doing. So, these are energy directors. Mudras are directing energy to that particular body part. You must have seen yogis sitting in meditative posture like this in Jnana Mudra. Okay, but there are many more mudras with which we can enhance our pranayama practice. Okay. So first we will learn about them and then we will practice them and see how we feel. Okay. So first it's very easy. 
which is Gyana Mudra. How it is done? We are going to join the tip of the index finger and thumb. Very gently touching each other. And then you may gently place your hands at the junction of thighs and abdomen. And then close your eyes for a moment. And few rounds of long and deep breaths. Just check, are you feeling centered? Long and deep inhalations and exhalations. And now gently let go of the Jnana Mudra and keep your palms open at the junction of thighs and abdomen. And you take a few rounds of long and deep breathing. And now again, very gently, join tip of index finger and thumb in Jnana Mudra. And just become aware of your breath, of that focused, centered energy flow. And slowly, you may open your eyes. We did very few rounds, hardly three to four rounds in this position. But can you feel any difference with our palms open at the junction of thighs and abdomen and with Gyan Mudra? Just be aware that is there something happening within. And let's learn one more mudra today, which is called as Prana Mudra. So Prana, as you know, with the help of prana we are alive it is going through our body but sometimes what happens when we are depressed or when we are stressed or tense we feel that we are not able to breathe completely and we don't definitely feel energetic so what we can do in that case is we can do prana mudra so we breathe more flow of prana in our body and mainly what is the location of prana obviously our entire body but especially around the lungs region okay so you may feel some flow of energy or something around this lungs so how to do this prana mudra so for that we are going to join this pinky and ring finger to the tip of the thumb okay so it goes like this put your finger ring finger to the tip of the thumb other two fingers are open and you may rest your hands at the junction of thighs and abdomen. Close your eyes and few rounds of diaphragmatic breathing, long and deep inhalations and exhalations. And slowly let go of the prana mudra. Keep your palms open at the junction of thighs and abdomen. A few rounds of normal breathing. Again, just two rounds of prana mudra. Joining ring finger, pinky to the tip of the thumb. And see, can you feel something around your lungs, something around your heart? Just try and be in tune with that flow of prana. Slowly let go of the prana mudra and you may open your eyes. And from here, now let me demonstrate. First comes the 
Gyana Mudra. Very simple. We are going to join the tip of the index finger and thumb. Okay. So this is Gyana Mudra. And now how to do Prana Mudra. So for that pinky ring finger to the tip of the thumb. Okay. Goes like this. I hope this helps. So our um, first practice today is going to be Nadi Shodhanam. And for Nadi Shodhanam, so you just learned about mudras. We are going to do this in Vishnu Mudra. So for Vishnu Mudra, you take your right hand and keep the ring finger and the little finger open. The next two fingers close and the thumb remains open. Okay, so a good way to remember is it looks like a V and two fingers next to the thumb are closed. Okay, the left hand can be at the junction of the thigh and abdomen. So you just keep your left hand there facing upwards. Now we will start breathing with alternate, this is Nadi Shodhanam, it's called alternate nostril breathing. So you inhale through the left, you hold your breath, exhale right, then again inhale through right, hold the breath and exhale left. I will guide you. We are going to do a short count today. And after the first round, when you have seen, you can then close your eyes for a deeper experience and try and keep your gaze uplifted at the point between the eyebrows. So closing the right nostril with the right thumb. Inhale through the left. Close and hold both nostrils. Hold your breath. Sail through the right, releasing the thumb. And then inhale right. Close and hold. Exhale left. This was one round of Nadi Shodhanam. You can do it to a count of 8, 10, 12, but keep them initially equal. The inhalation, the hold, and the exhalation should be kept equal initially. And then as you get better, you can hold longer, and that is more calming and more soothing. But today we are going to do an even practice and an even length. We will now do three rounds of Nadi Shodhanam. And I would invite you to close your eyes. You can just follow my voice. So closing your right nostril with the right thumb, sitting upright, nice and tall, making sure your stomach is relaxed, shoulders relaxed, and closing your eyes if you're comfortable. Inhale through the left. Close and hold. Exhale right. Inhale right, close and hold, exhale left. Inhale left, close and hold, exhale right. Inhale right, close and hold, exhale left, last round, inhale left, close and hold, Exhale right. Inhale right. Close and hold. Exhale left. Slowly release your hand. You can keep your eyes closed for a moment. And just enjoy a possible calmness that you feel in your mind. Maybe more space between the thoughts.
a little bit of stillness. Enjoy that for a moment. And now softly open your eyes. The next pranayam that we will practice, which is also very good for calming emotions and giving you a sense of relaxation and helping you feel a little more inwardness and stillness in between raising thoughts, is called sitkari. Now, sitkari is in, in English is just translated as the hissing breath, and it's a very gentle practice and it helps you relax in. It's a cooling, soothing pranayam. In pranayam traditions, we have warming, energizing pranayams, like a Surya Beda pranayam, Ujjayi. These are very energizing, Bhastrika, Kapalabhati. And they purify, energize, and generate some warmth. And then the cooling uh, pranayams are like, uh, Nadi Shodhanam works with both. When there is Chandra Bheda Pranayam, there is Sitkari, Sitali, Brahmari. These are all cooling pranayams. So in your practice, on a given day, choose energizing pranayams, then just stay with them. Or if you are doing more for relaxation, then stay with the cooling, calming pranayams like we are doing today, which is very good for relaxation and emotional well-being. In Sitkari, you gently, so don't clench your teeth, but gently place the teeth together and the tongue behind it. Yeah. And then you take a nice inhale. And then you close your lips. You feel a little coolness on the tongue. You circulate it. Try and take it even deeper into the brain as you get better at the practice. And then exhale through the nose. Okay, so that's a very simple practice. And we will do five rounds of Sitkari today. So don't clench your teeth, keep them gently together, and their tongue is behind. Yeah, very gently. And then as you inhale, there is some saliva and saliva and coolness that you feel on the tongue. So let's do Sitkari breath together. And that's like that hissing sound. <laughs> And then hold your breath, close your lips, relax your face, circulate that coolness. Exhale through the nose. Now taking the practice deeper, Sitkari inhale. Hold. Exhale through the nose. Inhale, Sitkari. Hold. Exhale through the nose. Inhale, Sitkari. Holding. Exhale. And one final round. Inhaling, Sitkari. Hold. And exhale. And resume normal breathing with your next inhalation. Just sitting still for a moment, enjoying the benefits of the pranayam, which is also important.
and softly open your eyes. So we learned Nadi Shodhanam and we learned Sitkari. I'm going to introduce one more pranayam to you and I'm sure many of you are also yoga teachers. So you're familiar with these practices. So shortly I'm going to introduce Brahmari, which is called the bumblebee breath. Okay. So dhora, as we say in Hindi, that always makes that humming sound, mm, that kind of a sound. Okay. So we will um, today practice it with a mudra also. And in the mudra for uh, the bumblebee breath or brahmari, we are going to cl close the um, flaps of the ears okay, uh, with the thumb. So you clo close the ear flap with the thumb. You can close your eyes with the little finger and the three fingers remain on the forehead. Okay, and you keep your eyes closed and you keep your gaze uplifted. This is how you can practice Brahmari. If it feels too much, you can also just leave your hands and just do the humming breath. Okay, so what we do is uh, we inhale and we exhale with the B sound, which is the humming sound. Okay, so each time you inhale, take a nice deep breath. And as you exhale, you exhale with the Brahmari breath, which is the humming sound. Okay, so those of you who would like to do it with the mudra can do. Otherwise, you can just keep your hands down and close your eyes and do this too. So inhale. Exhale, Brahmari. Keep your arms, shoulders relaxed, eyes closed. Inhale. Exhale, Brahmari. Inhale. Exhale, Brahmari. Mm. We'll do two more rounds at your own pace. You can do this quietly for a deeper experience. So I'm going to go on mute. Do two more times at your own pace. And slowly let go of your practice. Just sitting quietly for a moment, a very mini meditation. Making sure your shoulders are relaxed, chest is open, spine is tall, and your gaze is uplifted at the point between the eyebrows. Visualizing your favorite form of the divine, Ishta Devata there. Offering your gratitude to them. Om. And you can softly open your eyes now. So that was a brief practice of three pranayams which have been well researched and found to be hugely beneficial when you're experiencing any kind of stress or emotional tensions, upheavals, 
And you can, the beauty of these practices is they don't need any devices. You can practice them in the moment, right there. Just take a moment to go to a quiet place. You don't, with these mudras, you don't want to make a public display, but very quietly, even a few rounds can give you huge benefits.